Bell Hooks in Theory as Liberatory Practice writes, let me begin by saying I came to theory because I was hurting. The pain within me was so intense that I could not go on living. I came to theory desperate, wanting to comprehend, to grasp what was happening around and within me. Most importantly, I wanted the hurting to go away. I first read this piece during my sophomore year after I came out to a pastor at a local church in Manhattan. I was hurt because I was told that my lifestyle was immoral. Growing up as a pastor's kid, I always struggled with my identity. My parents believed that being gay was a sin. I understood the pain that Hooks wrote about, and I needed answers. For my presentation, I will illustrate how I used queer theory to set my identity as a gay Christian. More specifically, I will share a theory that I created the cruising lens, and how I used it to understand the case study of the gay church, Metropolitan Community Churches, or MCC. The purpose of outlining the cruising lens is to help demonstrate how MCC's unthinkable identity of being both gay and Christian exists within a homophobic religion. Let me set the scene. I first visited MCC's congregation in the fall of 2017 for Leather Sunday. Reverend Edgar Francisco preached his message, Loot for Everyone, to an audience which consisted of leather daddies and their twink sons. <laughs> Although MCC did not look like a typical church, it functioned as one. The service consisted of hymns, a message, communion, offering, and benediction. Basing his message on the biblical passage of Matthew 25, the gay reverend explained why the church was celebrating leather. According to church's theologies, expressing sexuality is connected to what we wear and the roles we play when we connect with others. Leather is about our bodies and our sexualities. They remind us that touching skin becomes a sacrament, a presence of God. And where God is present, there is freedom. MCC uses the same religion that condemns homosexuality to not only validate queerness, but to celebrate it. This is the gay church. Founded in 1969 by Reverend Troy Perry, MCC has always struggled to define its identity. While Christianity rejects the gay church because of its homosexual identity, the LGBTQ community dismisses it because of its entanglement with a homophobic religion. Additionally, while Reverend Perry denied that he created a homosexual church, early media outlets began defining it as one. Due to the inability to understand MCC's intersecting identity of being both gay and Christian, I position it into the unthinkable. Here I use Michel Rotrio's definition in Silencing the Past, where he defines unthinkability of, ha is of having no adequate instruments to conceptualize a phenomenon. Because of the inability to understand MCC's identity of being both gay and Christian, I turn to what I know best, the sexual act of cruising. The sexual act of cruising is a facet of gay culture where gay men search for risky sex in public spaces. George Chauncey in Gay New York writes that it was beginning 1910 where the New York City Police Department began criminalizing cruising, categorizing homosexuality as a form of prostitution. Despite these societal regulations and police threats, gay men pursued sex through the creation of new gestures like the subtle eye contact, and the creation of hidden code words such as tea rooms to navigate their ways on the street. Chauncey believed that cruising created a diverse gay world hidden within our homophobic society, especially during a time where homosexuality was both invisible and illegal. The sexual act of cruising teaches us how homosexuality exists within a homophobic society, much like how the gay church exists within Christianity. The sexual act of cruising pinpoints three reasons why homosexuality exists within our homophobic society. Queer power, queer world making, and utopic longings. These three principles define my cruising lens. When cruising the gay church, I first position it into queer power. MCC has been growing despite its continuous threats from Christianity. For example, while MCC has been denied membership to the National Council of Churches, the largest ecumenical body in the United States, 
It has grown to over 222 congregations today. I read this as queer power. The cruising lens teaches us that the gay church can take authority away from hegemonic power structures and appropriate the religion for the needs of the queer community. Queer power enables queer world making. Lauren Berlant and Michael Warner in Sex and Public Rights, that queerness within our heteronormative society functions as a deviant sexuality, opening up new spaces, ideas, and ways of living in the world. By cruising the gay church as forms of queer world making, we can read MCC's Leather Sundays, Pride Celebrations, AIDS Ministries, trans small groups, and pole dancing classes as new forms of Christian worship. Furthermore, MCC has inspired the creation of other LGBTQ groups within Christianity, including Dignity USA for Gay Catholics and Integrity for Gay Episcopalians. Queer world making challenges Christianity's heteronormative belief by demonstrating the ideas that queer individuals are able to change their religion and create their new traditions. Lastly, by cruising MCC, the gay church can be perceived as what Jose Munoz in Cruising Utopias calls the rejection of the here and now. Using Munoz's argument that queerness is a form of utopic longings, I position the gay church within the homophobic religion to be one that demands queer utopic realities. Christian social action, the first mission statement of MCC, commands the congregants to fight for queer rights in both the secular and religious world. This has been translated through the performance of same-sex marriages since 1971 and the creation of AIDS ministries during the crisis in the 80s. Today, MCC hosts activist groups such as Gays Against Guns in their buildings. By being perceived as utopic longings, I position the gay church within Christianity because it is by being within it that it can transform it. The cruising lens opens up new ways of looking at Christianity by dismantling the religion's inherent entanglement with heteronormativity. By demanding the gay church's rightful place in the religion, it helps reveal how Christianity can be more inclusive of all identities. By cruising the gay church as forms of queer power, queer world making, and utopic longings, I break down the idea of straight heaven and the ignorant belief that gays, that I deserve eternal damnation. Instead, by critiquing Christianity's belief on homosexuality, it helps reveal that the gay church in fact embraces the true essence of Christianity. Each service at MCC blends languages while allowing all people, not just believers, to join their worship. Its open communion practiced by all of MCC's affiliated churches means no restrictions at the table. This, to me, is a true heaven on earth. When applying the cruising lens to other phenomena, say for example myself, it helps promote new queer projects, discourses, interpretations, and fantasies. First, queer power. Thanks to Gallatin, for the past four years, I was able to create a concentration where I came to understand my identity as a gay Christian. It was in learning queer scholars such as Warner, Munoz, and Chauncey that I was able to take power away from the heteronormal and place it back onto the queer. Second, queer world making. I was tired of being kicked out of religious communities that I decided to create my own. Hosted by the LGBTQ Student Center, I founded LGBTQ Plus Faith for queer individuals to explore their religious identities here at NYU. Lastly, utopic longings. In the fall, I will be attending Harvard Divinity in hopes to follow my family's tradition and become a religious leader. It is my utopic longing to advocate for gay churches like MCC so that we can move towards this queer Christianity. Hooks ends her essay by saying that they are grateful for the many women and men who dare to create theory from a location of pain and struggle, who courageously exposes wounds to give us their experience, to teach and guide, as a means to chart new theoretical journeys. Their work is liberatory. I share my cruising lens with you today so that I can inspire you to look at the world a little differently, to start imagining new spaces for the unthinkable, and to use theory as liberatory practice. Therefore, 
I urge everyone to start cruising. <laughs> to start theorizing from your place of pain and struggle so that we can demand new spaces in worlds that are not just in Christianity. And to Christianity, I'm here, I'm queer, get used to it. Thank you. Woo!